do you read newspapers? Or perhaps you prefer reading things online. Maybe reading is in your medium. How about watching the news? Because all of us, at one point or another, has consumed media. And, and media is an important part of our life and our society. How else am I going to check sport results from the other side of the world? Or, or see if it will rain tomorrow? But, but what happens when, when media becomes a tool? A tool used to manipulate, a tool used to plan thoughts into our heads. Today, we will look at one such instance. In 1949, a CIA director by the name of Frank Wisner was given a task. He was given a task to start an organization responsible for the manipulation of media and direct action in America and countries around the world. This operation would be known as Mockingbird. The justification for all of this was to fight against the spread of communism, but, but surely there was a better way to do this. The CIA would go on to hire many, many top journalists working for big American publications to further their cause. But they did not stop there. They would also go on to bankroll students and foreign publications as well. Anything to stop the threat that is communism. They would even go as far as far as funding a Hollywood film. While we could argue the ethics of Operation Mockingbird, we cannot argue its effectiveness because, like it or not, Mockingbird was effective. The CIA was able to implement a mass media manipulation system, allowing them to control a good portion of public perception. They had the ability to release media that fit their narrative while censoring those they did not like, as long as it was under a company under their control. Companies such as CBS, Time Magazines, New York Times, New York Herald Tribune, New York Post, The Washington Post, Louisville Courier Journal, and Copley News Services. Another aspect of Mockingbird was the hunt for a communist sympathizer in the press and in the film industry. Investigation would be carried out looking just for a sniff of leftist ideas. In one instance, an investigation was carried out into the Hollywood film industry, this resulted in 11 offenders, 10 of which immediately sent to jail for a short period of time and blacklisted. This type of experience was not uncommon for those involved in the media and associated with the left. An American actor who goes by the name Lee J. Cub described the experience. The blacklist is just the opening gambit, being deprived of work. Your passport is confiscated, that's minor, but, but not being able to move without being tailed is something else. I was pretty much worn down, I had no money I couldn't borrow, I had the expenses of taking care of the children, why am I subjecting my loved ones to this? He later succumbed to the pressure and began cooperating with the CIA. While Mockingbird was able to operate secretly for some time, they could not stay in the shadow forever. In 1964, David Wise and Thomas B. Ross would publish The Invisible Government, a book going into detail about the CIA's covert activities and how the CIA operated. From there, just two short years later, Rampods would publish the first expose of Operation Mockingbird. Sol Stern, the writer of the expose, described the experience. Until the Rampod story broke, the government could count on the mandarins of Washington Post journalism to protect national security secrets. But as detail of the front group spilled out, Editorials in the Time and the Post skewered the secret funding arrangement and compared it with the methods used by America's Cold War enemies. The CIA was beginning to feel the heat. The Watergate scandal drew the attention of the American public onto America's many agencies. This led to many various investigations, the one being relevant to us being the Church hearing. In 1975, an American senator by the name Frank Church set up a committee this committee would call in CIA Director William Colby for a hearing. The church committee would go on to release various reports exposing the CIA, leading to public outrage. The next year, George A.W. Bush publicly ended the CIA's relation with the U.S. media, stating, The CIA will not enter into any paid or contractual relationships with any full-time or part-time news correspondent accredited by any United States news service, newspaper, periodical, radio, or television network or station. Propaganda and fake news has been a hot topic for quite some time now, especially since the 2016 US presidential election. It is a real possibility that many 
many different governments and large organization or cooperation could be scratch that is is using the media for their own good. I certainly wouldn't be surprised if an operation similar to Mockingbird is being run right now. And that's 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 really sad. <laughs> it's sad that the media, practically a daily part of our lives, could be used in such a way. It's sad that a large amount of people are being manipulated unknowingly. It's sad that there's nothing nothing we can really or I could really do about it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. See you next time.